Hello there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, Bluetooth 5 has been announced for quite a while now, the specification has been published, and it's gonna start appearing in our smartphones pretty soon, probably most notably in the Galaxy S8. Now the question is this, once you strip away all of the hype, once you strip away all of the PR talk, what is the truth about Bluetooth 5? Well, let me explain. Okay, Bluetooth 5 claimed two big things. First of all, it claimed that it is gonna boost the overall data speed of the Bluetooth protocol. So it actually claimed almost double the speed over uh, Bluetooth Low Energy 4.2. And the second thing it claims is much larger distances. Now, at first, when this was announced, it was announced in a kind of a way that you would think that you would get both the double data speed and the longer distances all actually wrapped up in one package. Well, it's not actually quite like that. Now I've done some testing and I've been looking at this and I want to explain to you the truth about Bluetooth 5. Now don't get me wrong, I think Bluetooth 5 is brilliant and I've really enjoyed my time experimenting with it and doing some testing about what you can achieve with Bluetooth 5, but it's important to understand some key truths, some key characteristics of the Bluetooth 5 specification. Now to do that, I've got hold of uh, two development boards, one for sending data and one for receiving data because there are no consumer level gadgets available yet that I could play with. Now those boards, I've got one here, hold on. This board here is from Nordic Semiconductors. It's the RF52840. It runs a, a ARM Cortex M4 microcontroller and then it's got all the Bluetooth circuitry built into it. In fact, I've got two of them. So I can send data between the two of them and then connected to a laptop, I can get some information out of it telling me the speeds uh, that I've been able to achieve. So what the Bluetooth 5 specification does is it adds at the lowest level, that's what we would call the physical level, because it's talking about the radio waves that go through the air at the physical level, they've doubled the speed of the data packets. So under Bluetooth Low Energy 4.2, the data packets were sent at one megabits a second. Now in Bluetooth 5, that's been doubled to two megabits a second. Now it doesn't mean that you'll get actually two megabits per second of data because there are a few things that happen in the protocol including gaps between different packets that are sent and those gaps are of a defined size and the gap between the packets has remained the same from Bluetooth uh, 4.2 to Bluetooth 5. So the overall speed is actually about 1.7 times faster and we'll, I'll show you some figures to go with that in a minute. Now that's the new two megabit per second of physical connection. But there's a separate type of connection. This is the key thing here. It's a separate type of connection is the long distance connection. So you're not gonna get two megabits over the longer distances, which may have been the way that it was kind of initially suggested. In fact, there's a special kind of connection which lowers the bit rate deliberately to be quite low, maybe to only 100 kilobits a second, but it's able to achieve maybe four times the distance. And it does that using a special encoding method, which I'll talk about in a minute. But let's start with the two megabits a second stuff. So what I did is I got an example program from Nordic Semiconductor who provide examples for developers on how to get the Bluetooth 5 stuff running. I modified it to meet my particular needs. And basically what I did was I ran the throughput test, which tells you how much data you can get through from one board to the other around my house. So the one board stayed connected to my computer over a USB cable, and then the other board I moved to different locations. Now here's a map of my house, and as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner is where the computer is and where the first board was. And then the little blue stars that you see around the place there are different places that I moved the second board to. So the first one just above there is where I moved it into the hallway outside of my office, and then I moved it into another room, then I moved it into the far corner of the house, and then I moved it back round to another place in the house. So basically, that's I measured the kind of throughput in those different places. Now my house is made mainly out of partition walls, so there's not much to, in terms of, kind of concrete uh, and bricks, but it's all kind of plasterboard, I think you Americans call um, drywall, and you've got wood and you've got insulation and you've got some metal frames, and, but basically we're not talking thick concrete walls. Now, you may get different results depending on the structure, the internal structure of your house. 
Now with the two balls next to each other, I was getting around 1.3, almost 1.4 megabits a second between the two boards. And that really is a significant increase, around 1.7 times faster than what you get with uh, Bluetooth Low Energy 4.2. Now as I move the second board around the house and the first point is out there in the hallway, just through one wall about five meters away, the speeds did start to change. But to compare it to how well Bluetooth uh, 4.2 did as well, I also ran the same tests over the older stack, which would then give us a comparison to see how the two are doing. So as you can see, as I move the board, the second board to point number one, which is about five meters away at 16 feet away, then the throughput on Bluetooth 5 dropped to uh, 1.2 megabits a second, which is still very, very good. And as a comparison, we can see that Bluetooth 4.2 was working at 672 uh, kilobits per second. So really that is all, uh, double there. Now once I move the board to its second point, which is 11 meters away, that's 36 feet away, went through two walls, we can see that Bluetooth 5 dropped down to 900 kilobits a second. Now that's quite a significant drop from 1.2 megabits a second, but we can see that Bluetooth 4 dropped from 672 megabits a second to 629 megabits a second. So the drop from Bluetooth 4 was much less than the drop from that you experience in Bluetooth 5. Now once I move to point number three, which is really the other end of my house, diagonally opposite to where my desk and the PC are, we can see the throughput drop significantly. On Bluetooth 5, we can see it's now 470 kilobits a second, and on Bluetooth 4.2, it was 386 kilobits a second. So it's 400 and something or other, and 300 and something or other. So Bluetooth 5 is still faster, but you can see that actually the difference between the two has been reduced significantly. And what that tells us is the further you get away, the further the range between the two devices, the less benefit there is to Bluetooth 5. When they're close to each other, within a few meters of each other, Bluetooth 5 is really fast, double, almost double the speed. But when you get to like 10, 11 meters away inside a house now, then that drops down and the difference between the two becomes less noticeable. Now the fourth test was a different place in the house. And as you can see here, I had 584 kilobits a second and 533 kilobits a second. Now, although that's, oh, that's closer than point number three, I think when I'm talking about the internals of a house, you're also talking about furniture, you're talking about the layout of the, you know, the walls, how they're made, the way things, signals bounce around. And clearly that route that had to be taken there between point, the, the, the sender and point number four is actually different to the way the signals went through the house from the sender to point number two. And again, your, diff, your measurements will be different depending on how the building that you're using when you're testing it. So to recap, what that tells us is that when Bluetooth 5 has a clear path, when there's maybe only a short distance or maybe just one wall between them, you're gonna get good Bluetooth 5 speeds, much better than what you're getting with uh, Bluetooth 4.2. But as that range increases, as the obstacles increase, the difference between 4.2 and 5 uh, is less uh, obvious. Now, as you can see, the, the way the Bluetooth 5 was described is we get double the performance and four times the distance. Well, you can see that's actually not true because Bluetooth 5 actually has a kind of the same distance in its two megabit mode that it does as Bluetooth 4.2 has in its one megabit mode. In fact, there are some mathematical calculations that would imply that actually the two megabit uh, per second mode of Bluetooth 5 actually has a shorter, slightly shorter range than that of Bluetooth uh, 4.2. But the difference is this, in Bluetooth 5, there is a new kind of connection that's been defined. It's a special kind of connection that says, I want to make a long distance connection here. So speed is automatically reduced right down to only 100 kilobits per second. So that's way down from 1.3 megabits down to 100 kilobits. What that means is that in each packet, there's more energy being used, more power transmitted for each individual bit that gets sent along. And they also use another trick. Now there's a thing uh, called Hamming codes. Now I've tried to explain this very, very quickly. If you're sending ones and zeros, that's how network communications work. If a one gets changed into a zero along the way, that can be disastrous because you thought you're receiving a one, but in fact you received a zero. And then of course the whole, everything just goes horribly wrong. Now there's a way of sending multiple bits to represent only one bit. Now I'll give you a really simple example. This isn't a Hamming code, but let me give you a really simple example. Instead of sending one, let's say I sent four ones, so one, 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 one. 
Now, if in the communication one of those bits gets changed, so now we've got 1101, we can be pretty sure, because there are still three ones in there, that actually that was meant to be a one. And so there's a way of correcting an error correction. And the same works for zero. If you send zero, 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 and actually you receive zero, one, zero, zero, you're pretty sure it was still meant to be a zero because only one bit got corrupted. But if two bits gets corrupted using this system that I'm explaining to you, then things fall apart because you don't know whether it's one, zero, one, zero. Did that come from zero, zero, zero? Or did it come from one, 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 and two bits have been changed? But thankfully, there's a whole area of computer science called information theory, which defines how you can send these packets and be sure, even if there is some corruption along the way, that the packets, uh, that you know what arrived at the end. Now, in Bluetooth 5, it's called forward error correction. It uses a type of Hamming code. And basically, for every one bit that's sent, there's another four bits are actually sent. So that means you also bring down the throughput significantly because you're sending more data, but you're more assured of what arrives at the other end. Now to test how this long distance connection works, because I don't have a 100 meter house, a 300 foot house, and how to see how Bluetooth 5 works sort of outdoors, or I took my these two boards down to a local shopping center with a friend of mine and we tried some experiments. Now this segment is a bit kind of wilder than me here in the studio because I'm kind of doing it there in the shopping center, but I hope you find it interesting. Okay, so I've come to a shopping center to try test out some of this Bluetooth stuff over long distances. I'm with my friend here, Jürgen. Hi. Okay, so I've got the two boards here. One's connected up to my Mac and the other board is connecting up here to a battery pack. And Jürgen's going to take it for a little walk and we're going to see how far we can go. Okay, off we go then, Jürgen. You go down there and we'll see whether we can talk to it. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to try a standard Bluetooth 5 connection. The two boards are in connection and the test is running. That managed 461 kilobits a second. Okay, so now we've come outside. He's got the other Bluetooth receiver in his hand. Let's see if we can, we can spot him. There he is. The boards are advertising and it's running. If I dare leave my laptop here for a second, just step out and see if we can show you where, how far away he is. So there's my kit, and he is all the way down there, underneath that parking, disabled parking sign. One thing that's worth mentioning is there are lots of people walking around here, and so I think as they're walking, sort of crowds kind of walk between me and Jürgen, the, the, the bit rate does seem to be changing. Sometimes the LED is flashing quite quickly, sometimes it's slowing down. So uh, just sort of interference, bodies, cars, uh, that, that, that does have also have an impact. And here comes Jürgen and we're gonna ask him how far away it was. So Jürgen, how far away is it? 111. 111 big paces? Yeah, almost a meter, I think. So or that's about, about 100, meter. 100 meters, I would say. Yeah, at least. So that's 100 meters outdoor, and that's got a stable connection. And so there we have it, the truth about Bluetooth 5. The truth is that it is faster than Bluetooth 4.2. There will be some great possibilities, so loads of applications that can be made for using this faster throughput, and yet with that still that low battery usage. However, don't expect four times the distance coverage with Bluetooth 5 using that two megabit per second uh, connection. If you want the long connections, then you have to put your, the Bluetooth has to be in a special mode, which they call coded because of that forward uh, error correction system, which allows the data to be transferred slower, but over a further distance. Now, that's great for Internet of Things, that's great for home security, that's great for home automation, but it's not the same stuff that you're gonna be using when you're sending audio to a speaker or something like that. So there we go, I'm looking forward to it. Now one thing just to mention is that actually the two megabit a second connection and the Kodi connection are not mandatory in Bluetooth 5. So actually a manufacturer can make a Bluetooth 5 piece of equipment with only the one megabit per second connection, just like Bluetooth uh, 4.2, but it has to understand all of the Bluetooth 5 protocols, which includes the expanded uh, advertisement packets, which I talked about in my other Bluetooth video, and that's great for beacons and so on. But actually, we I am hoping that when these Bluetooth 5 hits our smartphones, it's a full stack. 
I'm, I'm hoping they're not going to just cut away bits and just leave us with basically a Bluetooth 4.2 stack with a new understanding of the protocol packets. I hope they're actually going to put in the full Bluetooth 5 stack with the greater uh, distance and the, and the greater speed. We'll have to see when we come to do that testing. So I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Do hit that bell symbol so you get a notification whenever we release a new video. And last but not least, please go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.